Do you remember finite differences from grades 9, 10, maybe a little bit in 11? Remember it? Kind of yes, kind of no, no? Not a lot of nods, no? Um, okay, it's pretty easy. So we're going to do this, determine the degree of each of the following using finite differences, and then we're going to determine the equation of the polynomial function. Everybody got that written down? Okay. Finite differences. Finite differences just means first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, however many you do. Finite difference is just a global term for all of them. So we're... For this table, all we have is first differences. That's a bit of a tip of what's going to happen um, in, the, in a real situation. You wouldn't know how many of these you would have to do before you figure out what's going on. But in this case, uh, we only have one. How you calculate finite differences is you take a y value. First of all, we're going to notice that the x values are going up or down consistently. In this case, they're going up by ones. We all notice that. We take, a, we take a y value and we subtract the one above it. Does that make sense? So what is 2 minus 5? Jason. So these ones give us negative 3. The other way you can think about it is what's the change moving down the table. What do you have to do to go from 5 to 2? Down 3. Whether you Now sometimes you're going to have to subtract and you always subtract in the same direction. And as a standard we always do like the bottom one minus the top. Don't flip those around. Okay, bottom minus top and then we go down to the next one. Negative 1 minus 2. But the way to think about what's happening in terms of the graph what would the graph look like? As my x's are going over, I go over 1, my graph goes down 3. I go over 1, my graph goes down 3. I go over 1, my graph goes down 3, right? That's what it should look like. So that's down 3, and I think you'll notice that that's down 3. Does anybody remember what we can conclude from this now that we've done that first line, John? Very good. Why is it linear? Yeah. So since first differences... are all the same, this is linear. So what did we just, this is related to what we were doing in that we had one way of determining um, the degree of a polynomial function when we, had, when we were given the equation or we could probably do it from looking at a graph, those kinds of things. Well, now we just determine the degree based on a bunch of values. So now let's make the equation. But wait, how do we actually, this is something you know how to do from grade nine. You probably could figure it out. But we're going to do a very specific way of how we can find the equation, and you need this chart for it, which we haven't looked at yet. So if you think you can find this equation, play along and pretend for a minute that you can't. And then we're going to do something. And don't look at the back. The secret's on the back. You're not allowed to look at the back. <coughs> So you should be looking at this, something like this. Everybody got it? If the relationship was y equals mx plus b, what kind of polynomial is that? Linear, which has a degree of 1. So this is a degree 1 polynomial. Because, like, we've designed it that way. This is that m and b could be anything, right? It could be 2x minus 4, like, whatever it is. But we're going to do the general case of a linear equation, which is y equals mx plus b. So if I put 0 in for x, what would I get? m times 0 plus b. What is that? Thank you. b. 
m times 1 plus b is m plus b. m times 2 plus b is 2m plus b. m times 3 plus b. So see what we did here? We, this is just, again, what, what you do in grade 9. We take the values of x and we plug them in for x to determine what y is. This is a simple skill, but this is a powerful skill. You got an equation. You are given some values in that equation. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. And you can plug in and see what happens. See what you get. Now I'm going to do first differences. What is m plus b minus b? Because that's how we, like, what's the change? It's the one below minus the one above. M, good. Nice, yes, I, I agree. I concur. Anybody else agree with that? M plus B minus B is M. 2M plus B minus, like we could do this if we want. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna write this down and then erase it. Minus M plus B. That's what we're doing, right? In brackets. So 2M minus M is M and B minus B is gone. So what do I, what am I left with? And I'm sure many of you have already moved ahead and you know what's happening here. That's M, that's M, that's M. Ah, they're all the same. Therefore, this is linear. Well, we already knew it was linear, right? But we uh, confirmed it. So first difference is the same, therefore linear. And notice the degree. was 1, so it's linear as well because of the degree. And what is m in a linear relationship? Slope. It's a slope, so like when you find your first differences, in fact, that's not always true. This, this is, it only works because we're going up by 1s here. If I was going up by something else, I could still find the slope, but I'd have to do a bit more work. But in this case, when I'm going up by 1s, um, m is, or the first differences is the slope. So how does that help us when I go back here? So there's my slope. So m equals negative 3. And what is b? <clears throat> how do you know that? Thank you. Because at 0, y is 2. So we can just pick that out of the table. Does that make sense? Only because 0 was one of our x values does that work, but it always will be, so we're good. If it wasn't, you'd have to, I guess, find the pattern and like work it back to find 0 or something like that. But is a question? No? Anybody? Everybody okay? Seems simple so far. We were supposed to, oh, what we were supposed to do? Determine the degree. We did that. Check. Determine the equation of the polynomial. Therefore, y equals negative 3x plus 2. Satisfied? Happy with that? Let's do the next one. And you can go ahead and find the first differences. What are the second differences? You apply the same routine to the first differences. So you can go ahead and do that. Pretty straightforward, I think, pretty easy.
So this is what we got. Did you get the same thing? So what happens when I find second differences? 5 minus 1 is 4, so I'm going up 4. You don't have to put the plus sign. I put it just because I'm showing the direction, like they're increasing by 4. You don't have to put that. This is up 4. This is up 4. And this is up 4. Since second differences are equal, are all equal, not just two of them, not just three of them, all of them, obviously. Um, this is quadratic. If there's any doubt, it's where the first differences becomes consistent, or sorry, finite differences becomes consistent is equal to the degree. So if it's like the sixth differences becomes where it's equal, because notice the first differences were not, right? But then the second differences were, and the third differences will be zero, and then after that it'll always be zero. There's no point in going on, right? It'll always be zero after this. But once they become consistent, that's the degree. So the second differences were the same, therefore degree two, which is quadratic, right? Everybody okay with that? Um, in grade nine, some people think when they get to first differences, oh, there's a pattern, therefore it's linear. No, 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 right? No, we're not looking for a pattern. There is always going to be a pattern. That, that's the nature of polynomial functions. There's always going to be some pattern, but it has to be exactly the same. Four, 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 four. Okay, now let's come up with the equation. But wait, we don't know how to do that yet. So let's flip back over to our other page. And see if you can do the same thing for the quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c that we did for linear. Okay, hopefully you got something like this. They may get something like that. C, A plus B plus C, 4A plus 2B. Some of you probably moved on already. That's good. That's fine if you did. 9A plus 3B plus C. So I subbed in values, my values for X. So here's an example. When I put 3 in to X 
and squared it, I got 9. So 9a, right? And then when I do first differences, what do I get for the first position? A plus B. Do I keep going? Nice. And do we see a pattern happening here? Not the same. Not linear. We knew that because we can see the polynomial has a degree of 2 that we're working on. Okay. But if I, if I go again, 3A plus B minus A plus B, what does that give me? Somebody else? 2A, well, B minus B is good. So 2A, very good. And then 5A plus, or sorry, yeah, 5A plus B minus 3A plus B. Bs are gone. 5A minus 3A, 2A. Look at that. Second difference is the same, even in a general polynomial. I mean, this is math. That should happen. It kind of surprises us, but then when we think about it, now that shouldn't surprise us. Even with the general form, math rules apply. That's math. Okay, so uh, second difference is are all equal, therefore, degree two, and we also notice that it's got a degree of two there. Okay, everybody okay? So how does this help us with our equation? So this is the big step into how we, because the linear one was kind of easy. I see two hands. Anybody else have any ideas? Three, that's good. Anybody else? Like what can we do with the information we've got so far? I'll give you a hint. This sheet that I handed out that we just filled in, and you can peek at the back, but don't look at it too long. It's already filled in. You've got that for a reason. That's going to be useful somehow. We're going to use this somehow to solve the questions today. So what can I do? John, you hand your hand up first. Right. Can we conclude, therefore, 2a equals 4? Can't we conclude that? We did it for a general form. When we do things for a general form of something, we're essentially making formulas. Now, things don't always turn out nicely and useful with general forms. Sometimes they get messy, but that's it. Do you remember deriving the quadratic formula in grade 10? Vaguely. I know you don't have it memorized. You remember watching your teacher do it, I hope. Well, what did we do? We started with this general form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and we completed the square of the general form, a little bit of trickery to reduce it nicely, and bam, you've got the quadratic formula. All it is is a rearrangement of a skill into a form, then we then you know it's a little bit more convenient to use it that way instead of completing the square every time. Okay, so if 2a is 4, a is 4, very good. Now what? Why? Say that again. Oh, two, yeah. I thought you were, sorry, I thought you were talking about B. Yes, sorry. What else can we do? Well, we also know that the difference between 0 and 1 is a plus b, and it's also 1. Nice. So can we do this? a plus b is equal to 1 from here, right? But I know a, a is 2, so this is 2 plus b equals 1, so b is negative 1. And what else do I know? Why is C1? Any 
And now I can write the equation because I've got a, b, and c. So a x squared, which is 2x squared plus bx, whoops, so minus x plus c How do you like that? Okay, we're going to do two more examples together. You can copy that down. You can go ahead and start finding first differences, second differences, and third differences. It's a little bit of work to get all that done. And that the sheet that you were handed earlier, as I said, if you flip it over, you can see that the other two tables that we need are already filled out. But they're done the same way. Like the theory behind how they came to be what they are is done, but it's a lot of writing, so it's done for you. But then it, it works out exactly the same sort of way where you get all these little formulas and you get to memorize them all. No, you don't have to memorize them. That's a joke. Um, but you're going to use this page while you're doing your homework. We will do a quiz on this and you will get a handout that's already filled out. But if you had to refill out a grid like this, I hope... You feel like that's something you could do. And in general, that's a skill that is worth reflecting on. That, you know, it wouldn't look exactly like this, but you could maybe do something similar in a different context. Start with the general form. Maybe you know something about it. You sub in. You sort of reduce and simplify and see what happens. Anyway, so go ahead and work on these. How are we doing with that? Third differences are all equal. So this is a cubic. Degree three. We okay with that? So go ahead and use your sheet to try to come up with the equation.
I don't know how far you got so far, but this is what I found. So I said 6a from the sheet using the cubic because we found that it's degree three. Like you have to find the degree first so you know which table to use. Tables are all different, obviously. And the table says that third difference is the last column is equal to 6a. So here's my last column. So 6a equals 6, which means a equals 1. And then I looked back to the second column. And you could use any row, but we typically use the first one just because the, the numbers are smallest. 6a plus 2b. So that is equal to 6. So there it is. 6a plus 2b equals 6. And then I sub in my a value. You have to do them in order because you've got to find a first before you can find b. So, because I need to use A. So I sub that in and I got zero. Is that okay? Sure, that's okay. Why not? Of course, it's a number like any other. And now I'm not done yet, but I'm about to find C. <clears throat> so A was one, B was zero, plus C is five. So C is equal to four. And what's D, the last one we can always find. We don't have to do that one in order. Remember, that's just the Y intercept. So I just find it from the table when x is 0. d equals negative 5. And then I'm going to write my equation. Therefore, y equals, so a is 1, ax cubed. So it's 1, whoops. So y equals 1x cubed. I'm going to actually put the 1 in for now. Plus 0x squared, because b was 0. Plus, oh, I didn't finish that. Oh, I did, but it disappeared. Uh, 1 plus 0 plus C. Uh, 4 plus 4x minus 5. And if I wrote that properly, it would actually look like this. We talked about this at one other time, getting used to, like, so this is a cubic, a degree three polynomial, which has four terms, but one of the terms has a coefficient of zero, so we don't write it, but we still want to think of it as zero x squared. It's really important that we always remember that that's zero x squared. Any questions? That's essentially it. We're going to do one more example, but it's basically the same thing. So you're using the table that you were handed out, that you filled part of it out, and the other part is done for you. Depending on the degree, you've got to use the right table. You've got to find the degree first. Go to the table. Figure out each coefficient individually, then just plug them in. Yes? Right here. If you compare that to our other table, uh, right here, a, the, the first row... Of the first of the column of first differences is a plus b plus c for for a cubic. And again, these started at the same places, right? If you started them differently, it wouldn't have the same. It only works because they start. But I, but we're not going to. Don't worry about that. They will all start properly. But just so you know, that's part of the design. Okay, there's one more. I hope you can see those numbers. They were wrong. I had to fix them. I can read them out to you if you like. Negative 4, negative 1, negative 6, negative 43, negative 160, negative 429. I'm going to give you a hint. Easy mistake to make considering the three examples that we just did. Remember, be careful of direction. Like you're, You want to think about the change. How are these changing? So we subtract the bottom minus the top. 
But in other words, the sign matters. Whether it's positive or negative, that's the direction that the change is happening. So be careful of that. This is what I got so far, what we expected. The fourth difference is to be the same. So go ahead and keep going. I'm going to let you try to come up with the equation for that one. Um, and I handed out the homework. There's six tables, right, to do? Is that right, six? Uh, the instructions just say find the equation. Our instructions in this activity were um, determine whether it's, like determine the degree and then come up with the equation. But you have to find the degree to find the equation anyway. So don't be confused that the instructions are different. Oh, I don't have to find the degree. Yes, you do. Because you have to know which table to use. Okay, so you certainly have to do the, for all of the first, the finite differences to the point where you know the degree and then use the table to come up with the equation.